practice exam three, question twenty nine. A certain third period element has the following successive values for ionization energies. Okay. So first, let's uh, review what successive ionization energy means. Okay. Uh, for example, sodium. Sodium has one valence electron, so the s one electron. It's easily to lose that first electron becomes Na plus. That would require four hundred ninety six kilojoules per mole. Okay, so now if we take a look at the、uh, electron configuration for sodium atom, yeah, that's the three s one electron. The、uh, valence electron. So as I just mentioned a very short while ago, that one can be easily get lost, and then the remaining of course the sodium losing one electron becomes sodium plus. Okay, and then of course the electron configuration for sodium plus would become. This fully filled. Okay, you see every orbital is fully filled. So this is much more stable actually than this configuration. That's why sodium ion actually is more stable than just sodium. Okay, now what happen if sodium lose another electron? Of course, that can only be from this two、uh, b orbitals. All right, so. Then the electron configuration. Let me get this to work. Okay, will become two p five. So everything here actually they are considered as the core electron. Okay, if we look at the atom again, that's the core electron, and this is the valence electron. So now you are removing. You want to remove the second electron from sodium one plus. You have to take one electron from the core. You have to take one core electron. All right, out. Then that would require much higher energy. As shown in this table. So you see the first ionization energy removing the. One, the s one electron, the s electron is a four hundred ninety six kilojoules per mole. But if you want to remove one of the p electrons or one of the core electrons, you see that energy is it's a almost like tenfold. All right, so、uh, that's、um, very very high energy. Okay, that's for sodium. Sorry. Now let's take a look at the、uh, take a look at the、uh, magnesium atom. So that's the electron configuration for magnesium.、Um, it has a、uh, two、uh, valence electrons. So that's this、uh, two or three. Ice electrons, okay, can be easily get lost, then become a more stable. You see, inert gas electron configuration. All right, so、uh, this should be neons electron configuration. You see, so there are twelve. Electrons in magnesium atom, and now losing two, it has ten. So ten remaining electrons, and all of those ten, they are core electrons in the atom. All right. So now, after magnesium atom is ionized, becoming 
magnesium 2 plus. After that, if you want to remove another electron, you have to remove one of the core electrons, just like what we discussed with the sodium. All right? And that would require much, much higher energy. And that's why Mg3 plus, you don't see that. So it does not exist. It just takes too much energy. So you see here, it shows in these uh, consecutive ionization energies. Okay, magnesium losing its first electron uh, would require 700 kilojoules per mole. Lo losing its second is doubled. I mean, of course, that would require more energy, but it's still reasonable. But if you want to want magnesium 2 plus lose another one, it has to come from the core electrons. So uh, one of the uh, 2p electrons, is all right? That would require much, much higher energy, you see, from ionization, first ionization energy to second, it's doubled, but from the second to the third, that's that's more than four fold already, all right? So that's why you see, you can predict using the successive ionization energy, you can predict, okay, uh, which. So, like in this question, you know, so uh, which element among the ones that's given, okay? Uh, probably have a little bit hard time to see. Let me adjust this. Okay, yeah, come on. Don't move. Uh, I need a better device. So, okay, so you can use those information and the same information actually is given here. You can use those information then predict which element, okay, has the following successive values for ionization energy. In other words, which of these five elements in terms of their ionization energy would actually match this one, would make sense, okay? And now if we take a look at this, okay, from first ionization energy to second, that's doubled, reasonable. From second to the third, that's also doubled, that's also reasonable, all right? And then from third to fourth, that's less than double, also kind of reasonable. But now, from fourth to fifth, that's fourfold. Okay, then what does this tell me? This tells me this electron right here, if you want to remove, I mean, ionize the fifth electron, that's from core electron. If that one is from core electron, then the first four, they are valence electron. And then that tells me the element of choice has to have, has to be in the fourth group or has to have uh, four valence electrons. And the number of valence electrons equal the number of main group. That's what we learned in class. Let me bring the periodical table back. So, okay, group 1A should have one valence electron and always form positive one charge. Group 2A always form positive two charges, okay? So, or we can say group 1A, the number of valence electrons is always one. It's the S1 electron. Group 2A is always the number of valence electrons is always two, and that's the and as two electrons. Then 3A, the valence electron, should be three. Why? It has an S2, the first two uh, S electrons, and then P1, and P1, all right? So then group 4A should have four valence electrons, okay? What are the electron configuration of the four valence electrons? should be Ns2, 
true and P two. All right. So N S two everything here that's N P two. Okay. So from those information, we know the elements has to be in the fourth group. And let's take a look at carbon and nitrogen. They are in the third group. Is that right? What are those two again? Carbon and nitrogen. So carbon, nitrogen, they are actually in the second group. All right? So they are in the second group. So... Okay. So therefore, what is us is the third period. I have to correct. So they are in the second period, not the second group. Okay. So, but what is us is a, a third period element. Therefore, carbon and the nitrogen they are out. Has to be third. All the remaining three they are in the third. Period, but we already determined it has to be in the four A group. So the remaining three aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus. Okay, so they are all in the third period. So that actually satisfies this condition, but only silicon satisfies the four valence electron. That requirement. Okay? So then after removing the four valence electrons, it would require much greater energy. You see the huge ionization energy jump to remove the fifth one, which is a core, core electron. Okay?